Hello everyone, Reflect and Reset with Maria and Gina. And this is a new set that we have. And we want to thank our sponsor, Henry Ramos from Deadline AV. And his website is WestchesterLiveVideo.com. And Gina, my partner, I missed you. I know. I know. It's been 10 days since I've been in quarantine. And it's, um, you know, it's precaution for me because I'm asthmatic, as we know. So it's, uh, but it's, it's hard being away from you and being away from the office. But at least I get to do Facebook Live with you guys. Yes, thank, thanks to Henry. I, I tell you what an angel uh, God has sent us because he reached out to me because he realized that we are not doing the Facebook Live because we really didn't have the means to do this uh, virtually. But since we couldn't, you and I couldn't really be together in the same room, he offered to do this for us. And we are so grateful that we're able to continue to get give the information to the community. And these are very important times where we need to really continue to give information that is valuable to the community. And Gina, this has been really tough. Um, and uh, I want you to introduce okay. someone that has been a leader uh, amazing uh, leader during these times at Formate. So take it over, partner. So I, you're breaking up a little bit on my end, unfortunately, but um, I'm going to introduce our very own Dr. Middleton, uh, who is our medical director at Forme Medical Center. Um, we're going to take some questions and answers about what's happening with the virus and, you know, what to do about it, um, you know, precautions that you need to take, preventative medicine that you need to take. And there he is, Dr. Middleton. Uh, we got a little stuck back before, but hopefully we're better. Um, so Dr. Middleton, why don't you tell us what you're, what you're experiencing on the front lines? Hi, Dr. Middleton, can you hear us? We're having a little technical issue. Technical difficulties. His mic might not be on. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I, you kind of broke up, so I'm going to assume you were just bestowing praise upon me. So, <laughs> you were right. <laughs> and uh, it's good to be here. So, Dr. Middleton, we are living in very unique times. And um, could you tell us, like, what has been your experience this past two weeks, I, I would say, with uh, this virus in our office? Well, it, everything that's happening is certainly un, unprecedented, and even the way that we treat patients is uh, uh, unprecedented. Uh, imagine an urgent care an urgent care center having to screen phone calls for people with a cough, which usually that's butter. We encourage those people to come in. We want to take care of them, uh, we want to treat them, and certainly we, we just we just can't have them, we can't have them in because we're, we're uh, fearful that they can spread the virus. Uh, we screen them ahead of time. Uh, and it's not just to be, you know, uh, uh, rotten people. This is actually from the recommendation of the Department of Health. So uh, everything that's happening is unprecedented. Now we're doing um, uh, telemedicine. They have uh, the, the federal government and this, uh, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, they have uh, uh, relaxed all the rules that they previously had. So um, people don't have to come to the office if they don't have to, if they don't want to, that we can see them uh, basically the way that uh, the three of us are seeing each other right now. Yeah, which is and pretty finding cool. a lot of, yeah, are you finding a lot of patients are getting used to this type of treatment? Uh, yeah, it's, it's an adjustment for, for us as well. Uh, but yeah, the, the patients are, seem to be adjusting. It, it's an adjustment period, I think, for, for on, on both sides. It's not always easy 
you know, to be the, uh, the, the, the clinician. And, you know, we certainly have to guess correctly. We want to guess correctly without being able to touch the patient. Uh, but that's, that's the way it is for us. Certainly we can have somebody come in if we really, really, you know, if, if I really decide, you know, I want to get my hands on them and, and, and palpate something, but, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I think Maria might be a little frozen. No, they, she, she, there she goes. <clears throat> So, okay. So we have a lot of people watching now and you know, what we're finding is like when people are going for the test, they don't realize that they think they have the symptoms and they're sent for the test. People don't realize that they're not supposed to run to their doctor's office. If they have symptoms, they're not no. supposed to come around people. Well, you know? yeah. First thing, you know, certainly call us. I mean, that's fine. And, and mo I, I could just tell you, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I don't ever remember um, seeing this many phone calls that we're now that we're doing telemedicine. So I'll call those phone calls and telemedicine visits. The, the number of people with symptoms that we're getting is it's, it is astronomical. And, you know, the problem is, is not only do we have the COVID-19 going around, we have regular flu and we have uh, the run of the mill colds that are also going around. Uh, but, you know, usually, a, usually not always, usually uh, a, a, um, a, a common cold virus, the common virus that, uh, sorry, the virus that causes the common cold usually does not cause a fever. But the amount of people that are calling with the classic symptoms for what uh, is associated with the COVID-19, uh, the dry cough, the fever, uh, severe fatigue, muscle aches, and headache, it, it has been unbelievable. It is unbelievable. So um, we do encourage patients to call us. Now, as of last Friday at about 3.45 in the afternoon, uh, the Department of Health said we really, they were, they were running out of testing supplies and they didn't want us just to test anybody. So we can, we can, we can now, for some of the symptoms, we can, we can safely, and certainly if someone has had contact with someone who was coughing and turned out did have COVID-19, we can assume that they have it. Uh, this is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly infectious uh, illness. It spreads like wildfire. So, you know, just being in the presence of someone coughing that has had it, chances are that they have it also. I, I don't need to test. I, I really, I really don't. Um, and certainly with these more uh, obscure findings, when I say obscure, I mean, maybe I should say uncommon findings because we, we don't always see this with the common cold, but, but recently, you know, I had, I've had four people, call, maybe they saw in the news and they think they have it, I don't know, but I've had four people already, uh, and, and two, two yesterday, two today, call up this, this new symptom that, that is a harbinger of COVID-19. They can't smell anything and they can't taste anything. I literally just got off the phone with someone for a telemedicine visit with someone about half an hour ago who has, has, has a fever, uh, a headache, and she's noticed she can't smell or taste anything. Now she said she was working with someone that, can't, that, that was coughing last week and she tested positive for it. She says, you know, I wanna go get tested. I said, what for, you have it. You have it. Stay home, quarantine yourself, and uh, you know you treat yourself with Tylenol and uh, pl plenty of liquids. So um, yeah, the, the number of calls that we're getting for this is just is, is just uh, for what I, I guess. Is call, question. question like who then should test for the virus? Well, certainly uh, anyone who. Uh, it, 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 I shouldn't say, you know, that woman shouldn't get tested. My advice is that you have it. You have all the classic symptoms. You know, perhaps, um, you know, someone uh, who might have an underlying condition and isn't sure, like diabetes, asthma, uh, asthma high blood pressure, maybe you want to get tested. Certainly there they are, and, and I'm myself, it's, you know, the, the information who's testing, who's not testing, where to get tested, it seems to be, uh, a, a bit nebulous and, and changing as well um, because they they only want people with symptoms 
to get tested, I guess, if, if you're not sure. Now, in her case, I mean, if she, she was, she's working side by side, is what she told me, with someone that tested positive for it. And then a couple of days later, she's got these symptoms. There's no reason for her to get tested. We know she has it. We absolutely know she has it. So what? someone else, it's, you know, so maybe, if, if, you know, like I said, if you have uh, underlying medical conditions, um, you might want to go and get tested. Uh, I'm sorry, I know if you go, um, if you were admitted, they're going to test you. So anyone who's short of breath, you know, those are the people that really should go to the hospital anyway, because the, the, um, the, the dangerous uh, uh, infection is when this goes to, to the lung and causes a pneumonia. And then if, when it infects your lung and you kid clearly, you're going to be short of breath and, uh, you know, we, you, that's potentially, uh, that is life threatening. It is, is it's, it's, it, it can kill you. So you definitely, those are the people that need to go to the emergency room. Those people, if you can't breathe, they're going to be admitted and uh, certainly they will, they will test you there. So I, I'm listening to different opinions on who should get, who should not get tested. I was listening to a podcast uh, this morning. You know, the infectious disease doctor that I was listening to is from um, uh, 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 Harvard Medical in Massachusetts, and he wants everybody tested because they want to know the entire spectrum of this disease. They want to know everything about it. They want to know, you know, you hear in the news there's, there's now, you know, if you have an eye infection, it could be uh, a symptom that you're that you're starting to come down with the disease in the kids. Apparently, it's coming uh, with uh, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. There's more GI symptoms, and, and younger adults are also getting some GI symptoms. Also, so you know, the, from he, I mean, he made a good point. He says he wants to test everybody so they know every single aspect of this disease. It's never been on. It has it has never infected humans before. So they want to know everything how they possibly can. So they want to get to know who's positive, study them, get their symptoms, but from a, an economic uh, standpoint, or just, I, I guess, the, the law of supply and demand, since there's not enough tests to go around, then that uh, it makes sense that the Department of Health would have pulled back on what they had originally said. Anyone who wants to get tested, you can go to one of these drive through centers, and then seem to have pulled back on that last Friday because they are running out of tests. Now that may change again. The president is promising these, uh, these uh, rapid tests that are going to be done, um, completed, you'll know in 45 minutes, but we don't have those yet. It's, it's not Friday yet. He was promising by the end of the week. And just because he promises by the end of the week, he's going to have it by the week. So I have a question. Um, being asthmatic and if I were to experience any type of symptom, Am I one that should be running to the emergency room or do I wait until that shortness of breath comes on? I, I mean, it, 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 that's a hard call. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to get caught where uh, you're, you're, you're over that edge and now you can't breathe. So that's, I mean, if, if, you, if you can't breathe, you can't breathe. You should, Even I, I tight. Should, well, not necessarily tightness. You know, if you can't breathe, you're gasping for air. The people that I'm, that I'm, and again, I haven't seen personally someone with it. It's just what I'm reading, what I'm seeing. And even, you know, in interviews on people on the news, they're saying that, you know, they, they couldn't talk. They were unable mm -hmm. to speak. They were so short of breath, they couldn't even get the words out of their mouth. So, you know, at what point does that, and, and that may be subjective for a lot of people, so at, at what point that happens, you know, I, I don't know. I just know that if, if you're short of breath, uh, you, you need, and the other reason, you know, you, you should go to the ER, they're going to put something called a pulse ox on you that's going to show on your finger to see how much your blood is, is being oxygenated. So, that's the middle. so, so I would have a lower <laughs> threshold than someone who, who has asthma, emphysema, any other chronic interstitial lung disease, any... Any known uh, lung disease, uh, my, my threshold for that would be a lot lower. Question, Dr. Middleton. Um, this virus is so different than the flu. And I know that the, the rate of uh, uh, transferring the virus to someone else is greater than the flu. Do you have any idea of what's the difference? Like how many people I, get infected from one person? 
I, I've, I've read today in the news, one person can infect 59,000 people. I don't know if it, I, I didn't read, that was the headline. I didn't open the article. Uh, usually you, uh, each person is gonna infect two and a half more people. That's the general rule. Um, so, but it actually, believe it or not, from the, one of the lectures that I, that I, that I attended uh, online, that actually is similar to the way the flu is, in in the in, as far as spread in the fact that you're going you're going to be spreading it before you ever know that you have it and that is why it is such a it, it's they they it's hard to get a handle on it it's hard to get in front of it because people feel fine they're spreading it they don't know they're spreading it yet because they don't have symptoms for how many days can you explain the 14 days quarantine by how many days are you with this virus uh, where you have, where you are asymptomatic and then how many days symptomatic and then how many days to clear sort of the virus from well, your system? Yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone behaves different. There are people that they have shown that, that have had the virus up to 27 days, even though they're, they've had it, they feel better. So by that standard, no longer be on quarantine, but they're, they are testing some people and they are, they are finding that they're having it for up, up to 27 days. So what, what, we're, what we're doing is we're, uh, you, it, the average is you'll have, people will have uh, a, a, within uh, two to seven days, they'll, they'll start with symptoms. That seems to be the average, but an average is just an average. And then after they feel better and they've been without a fever, uh, they have to be without fever for at least three days. So when they feel better, um, they, they should be total at least quarantined for, for two weeks. That's what the Department of Health is telling us. Patients should need to be quarantined for two weeks. As far as when you're actually, you don't, you're not shedding the virus anymore, you know, there, there's not really going to be good follow-up on that because we're you know, we're, we're not really testing afterwards. The, the people that they're testing are people in these studies that are enrolled in these studies. And, and that's how they know that there are some people that can, that can still be shedding it up. To, they'll have low levels in their body up until, you know, 27 days later, even though that that's not, that's not the norm, but it can happen. And what about, um, can you get it again? If I've had it and then it's gone, it disappears, can I get it again? They well again nobody knows, but they think that you can't. But we we don't know yet, and they don't know it may you know come around next year like like the flu, uh, that flu comes around every year. So we don't know yet if if getting if once you clear this that you'll that you'll get it again. You know the, the flu mutates every you. the flu the flu mutates every year, which is why every year we have a, a flu vaccine because it, it's a new strain of the flu every year. Um, so with this, it has, it, it remains seen. Um, be, we don't know if it's gonna come back. We don't know if it's gonna mutate the way the flu does. We, we, just, don't, we just don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So basically right now, what people should call you and do a telemedicine visit is pretty much to control or treat symptoms, right? Because there's no treatment for this virus, correct? Yeah. There, well, there, yeah, there, there's nothing that has been officially, I guess, sanctioned or uh, uh, FDA approved uh, for the treatment of it. But but the but they are tr uh, testing a couple of different drugs. They've been on the news. I've read various reports uh, that uh, about them. Uh, I'm hearing anecdotal reports of, uh, of some of my colleagues that are, that are using them. Um, so yes, but uh, beyond that, yes, treatment is symptomatic. And, and even the people that are getting it, you know, the, 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 the medicine that they're talking about anyway is this combination of um, the Plaquenil, which has been around since the 1950s, and a Z pack, which most people have probably taken uh, the, the, the azithromycin Z pack, two on the first day, and then one pill that for, uh, that for the next four days. Um, it, it's that combination that, that they are studying. 
Um, and, you know, these medications have been around for, uh, for, for, for a long time and they're starting to use them, but you wouldn't, you would, nobody should take it just because they have a fever. You, the, the people that they are reserving it for, and I, I agree, are the people who are having trouble breathing. Okay. Because that is, that's when this can turn deadly. So those are the people that really they should be taking those kind of medications and, and they are giving in, in the hospital. That's, that's what I'm hearing. But I wouldn't just, take it. if I come down with it tomorrow, I'm not going to start, nor am I going to look for it. I'm, I'm not going to start taking those medications. You know, if, if I turn for the worse, you know, and I can't breathe, uh, you know, then I, I might consider it. I would take it, you know, maybe I would go to the ER. Um, but as, but, uh, as you know, and it, even if it showed, it, let, let's say I did an x-ray and it shows I have an infiltrate, but if I'm walking and talking, I, you know, I still wouldn't necessarily be admitted, but it, it would, you know, I, at that point is when I would take it when, you know, when I can't breathe, when you can't breathe, that's really who should be getting it. Got it. And I find out from the pharmacy today that uh, most of the z packs are getting in, they're reserving for their hospitals. They're not giving yes, them out. As a matter of Yes, they, uh, the hospitals have first priority when these things become available. I spoke to our pharmacist as well, and he, he explained it to me. Um, so they, the, the, the hospitals have first priority, and they are giving it to these patients. Uh, on Sunday, um, I received an email, and everyone can get on the, the COVID uh, uh, email from the governor, and that, that's how I got it. He didn't send it to me special. Um, that they, they purchased, I'm going to, maybe I'll fudge the numbers here, I think 500,000 doses of, of the uh, hydroxychloroquine, 100,000 doses of chloroquine, and 70,000 doses of the azithromycin. So they started enrolling, uh, they said they were going to start enrolling people on Tuesday in, in, um, in various trials with these medications. Now, how that's working, I have no idea, but... You know, I'm assuming that all these trials are going to have to be with people who are in the hospital, uh, right. hospital. So, um, you know, that's where all these medications are 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 to. So, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's, it's very important that people don't make a run on it and, and try to hoard it. They really should be available for the hospitalized patients. Those are the ones that need it most. If, if anybody if anybody wants to ask any questions, please, this is a time to ask any questions to Dr. Middleton, uh, somebody that is really at the front line in dealing with all the issues and, uh, and put it in the comments, please, put it in the comments. Um, Dr. Middleton, one of the issues that we find and we experience this here is that people think because my daughter is having the symptom, almost like you don't think that you could be carrying the virus, that you should be treating yourself like you have this virus. It's, what, what do you think? What do you say to people like that? Because we know that this is happening. They just go out uh, uh, and they... You, you broke up. What was the question? So the question is, what, what is the message that you're giving people that think because their family, one person in the family had it, has the virus or the symptoms that somehow they're immune and that they can go out because this is happening. But we've had people that go up, you know, asking questions about the daughter, that the daughter is is having the symptoms and but he's talking to us like because he has no symptoms, he's okay. And I'm like, okay, we need to keep the distance. And then we have to make sure we sort of disinfect because he could be carrying the virus. So what, what is your message to the people? Yeah, no, it, it, the, here, here's the other issue and what also makes the virus so contagious. There are a bunch of people that have it and never know that they had it. That's a, that's a big problem. So they're, they're giving it to other people and they, they, there are asymptomatic carriers of it. So that is a big issue. So even so, first and nobody's immune to it. There is nobody that is immune to it. Even I mean, just because you don't get symptoms does not mean you're immune to it. It just means you know, you didn't get symptoms. That's all that means. It doesn't mean anything right. else. You got lucky, you didn't get symptoms, but you can still give it to other people. 
So that is a huge, you, everyone should be social distancing. Everyone should be, should be in, in quarantine. Certainly if, if you live with someone that has it, you're, I hate to say you're going to get it. I mean, it depends how, how large of, uh, of a living space that you have. If you don't have the east wing and the north wing and the west wing and you're living in a small apartment, you're getting it. Okay, you, and you just have to assume that, that, you, that you have it, you can give it to someone else, even if you don't get symptoms. If you didn't get symptoms, you're lucky, you're probably you're an asymptomatic carrier and that does happen. Um, or or, you're, or you're, you're gonna get symptoms of it, either or. You, people really should be uh, social distancing and staying at home, which and also uh, reminds me of, of another thing. You know, when we've had a couple patients show up here, they went to get tested, and it says follow up with your doctor. That does not mean come into the office. Don't come into the office. You know, if your fingers are not broken and your cell phone is not broken, call us, and we'll 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 try to you know if the, because and, and I will tell you we have tested a couple of people. I shouldn't say we tested, we've given them prescriptions to get tested. The results did not come to me. The, re the results went right to the patient. And then the patients informed me, us, that they turned, they, that they tested positive. So I didn't even get it. So a lot of this, I mean, it may depend on where you're getting tested. Um, mm -hmm. This particular individual or a couple of people that came yesterday, they went to the hospital. Um, someone, uh, the other two people went to one of the drive-through testing centers and though at the drive-through testing centers, even though it was my prescription, the results were given to the patient directly and those patients contacted us. I don't know how the hospital is going to handle it. Um, I don't know, but either way, if, 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 it, if you are suspected of having it, then you should be quarantined. And that means don't come and give it, give it to me or, or our staff. Stay home and call. Your phone works. Your landline, if you have a landline, works. Uh, you know, get in touch with us. And certainly, if we hear anything, you know, we're like always. We we call everyone with with the results. We're gonna we're gonna look for you. But I I, I don't know how they're actually hand, handling it because it's 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 so new. There's so much unknown, and I think everybody is you know freaking out in in. Obviously, this is very scary times, and we understand. But people have to understand that if you're going out, you are you are most likely spreading a virus that can kill someone. Because obviously, you know, we've heard that eighty percent of the people have mild, you know, a mild case of the virus. But it's that twenty percent that is at risk, and it's increasing. I mean, these numbers are crazy. I have a chart that I go to um, periodically during the day and you get access to all of the, the accounts for the entire world. And it's amazing and what is happening here and we're in the 60,000 and it's a virus that is dangerous and we find, you know, I know people that are actually in that risk factor and they're like, well, whatever, it's really, we're making a big deal out of this virus but it is a big deal and i think at the beginning myself included i'm like oh my god everything is being closed you know everybody is this is going to kill the economy but it's also killing people so we have to be sensitive to that i think we really have to be kind not just think of ourselves but this time is a time of thinking that your action is affecting other people Right. And let's talk about the best thing to do to prevent this virus. I know it starts in your hands. So how does it get to you? Well, it, it, first of all, it, it, can, it, it can live on, it lives on surfaces. The original uh, report was it can live up to three days. And now they found it on that cruise line, uh, the, the princess something or other, uh, up to 17 days later. So it's, wow. it's, it's crazy how they can live on surfaces. Yeah. So yes, it, it's, it spread, it lives on hard surfaces, uh, plastic metal. So uh, it doesn't do so well on cardboard. I read. Um, so, but you know, you, you grab, you grab a door handle and then you scratch your face. Well, you, you, then you scratch, or you scratch your eye. You've just introduced it to yourself. So yet you just have to be careful and wash your hands. 
again and again and again. I don't, I don't touch anything on the way out of the building. I don't touch anything in the building. I try to open up everything with my sleeve. I, I push with my with, with my forearms or, or my back to open doors. <laughs> so and what about? Go ahead, Gina. What about like Lysol, like the Lysol wipes and stuff? Does yeah, that will no, that? And those, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny because it says on it it kills the coronavirus. No, you know. So oh, does it say no? Yeah. This is not the only coronavirus. I mean, this you know there there's there, there are plenty of coronaviruses out there. So it, it doesn't. It is not a conspiracy that Lysol knew about it and that it was coming down the pike. There's, there's many, this, the, the SARS was a coronavirus or is a coronavirus. MERS that was a few years ago, also a coronavirus. So it, it's not, the, this is not the only coronavirus. So, um, but yeah, you know, Lysol happens to, to kill it. So absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're good to wipe things down. It, it says it kills uh, these viruses within like, I think like, like four minutes afterwards. So yes, absolutely, that stuff kills it. The the hand sanitizer certainly work. They're alcohol based, and then of course, you know, washing your hands for at least you know twenty seconds. But you know, yeah, you just it, it's it's the, the biggest one of the biggest things is, is to try not to touch your face afterwards because that's usually how it gets introduced to the body. Unless someone just coughs on you, if someone even yeah. because it, it's. It, it's aerosolized, which means it hangs out in the air. I forget how long it can hang out in the air for before it falls and hits the ground. But you're 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 walking into their into their air, and you you, you certainly can can get it that way. Yeah, this is. There, this everyone is six feet. This is six feet. Six feet. That's the distance. People have to. We, we have to get very creative with uh, obviously, you know, shows like this and get into telemedicine. So I know that we are doing telemedicine here and it's actually, we've been preparing for this without knowing because we've had a system in place for about two months, I would say, with one of our doctors. But now you're using this system, which is, uh, we also have it in our website. So if any of the viewers want to get in touch with Dr. And you can go into our website under uh, telemedicine and you can request, here's our website, you can go under telemedicine and you request a visit with the doctor virtually, um, which is very easy to do and the insurance companies are actually paying for it now. So you just want to talk to a doctor. You do not go to the emergency room unless you're having issues breathing and uh, you're under that criteria, you know, that uh, with the people that could be at risk. But the rest of the people should just go and do telemedicine. This is, now we are able to do telemedicine in so many different ways because the HIPAA regulations that the government had, they lift them, them up. So we are, we are not, we're able to do FaceTime, WhatsApp, uh, in so many different ways. So you can get in touch with your doctor. You do not have to leave your house. I just want to make that clear. So, GC, so um, you you were tested, right? You were waiting for yeah, your test. Yes, I, went, I went to Norwalk yesterday um, and got tested. You know, I'm a little over, a little concerned also because I do have a breathing problem. Um, so far, no symptoms. So I'm hoping that, but I was in contact with somebody that, that may have it. Uh, he got tested as well. So if I do uh, test positive, then I got to be on special alert um, to monitor my breathing and then just shoot right for the hospital. My breathing starts to come later. Um, yeah. You know, it's a scary, it's, you know, I know what it feels like not to be able to breathe and it's a very scary feeling. So I don't wish it on anybody. You know, and I definitely don't want to feel that feeling again. So, yeah. you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. We, we're praying for you. We're praying for you. Dr. Middleton, there's a lot. I hear a lot of things of how to treat this. Uh, one of the things is like uh, take hot water or very warm water and gargle with it. What do you think of that? that that's not true. It's just, it's just, it's just not true. <laughs> Anyone can go on to the, and I would encourage people to, and as the, and as the knowledge changes, the, 
and I'll actually mention something about knowledge changing. Uh, as the knowledge changes, the, the websites will be updated. There's the World Health Organization and the CDC. As a matter of fact, even the, uh, the New York State Department of Health also has a web page uh, devoted to uh, COVID-19, this, this coronavirus. But that is just, that is just not true. There, there was originally last Monday, uh, there was a report that we should not use ibuprofen to treat this. So people were asking, as a matter of fact, we were on Facebook Live and, and I said, well, that's not true. Uh, the next day, that was a recommendation originally from the World Health Organization based on, uh, I think some, it was some French study that, that um, it, it not only does uh, medicines like Motrin and Advil, which are ibuprofen, not only do they block the, feb the, the fever response and the inflammatory response, but it also blocks uh, a pathway in the body that, that, that allows us to make antibodies. But then a, a, a study in Spain actually refuted that. So the next day, and it, uh, the World Health Organization said that they, they, don't, they, they, they no longer recommend against the use of ibuprofen but they, but the way they were, that they recommend the use of Tylenol first. Mm. So as all this is changing, you can go yeah. to uh, websites and and all of it. You know, I mean, the CDC, it, it's all in in uh, layman's terms. Uh, the World Health Organization, all in layman's terms, they'll give you uh, the, all you need to know about masks and you know hand washing and social distance. And they, it actually, they they do a pretty good job. They do a very good job of of explaining all this and what we know so far. So you advise people to go to the website for the Department of Health and, and what else? Just want to double check. Again. Whichever one, New York, New, we live in New York, New, New York State Department of Health, the, uh, the CDC uh, and the World Health Organization. Great. Dr. Middleton, um, I want to say thank you. Thank you for all the work, the hard work that you do. And I think you work long, long hours. I mean, you've all worked long, long hours. But this is to another level. And we want to, Gina and I want to thank you for being there for our community because you are really, you care. You're wonderful to this people, especially the Latino community. And uh, we are grateful to have you as a leader for me so thank you so much yeah thank you welcome thank you happy to be here thank you so we went a little over than usual so but i think during this time there's so much information to give to the community that it was important we will be back i will be on monday with reflexiones con maria and um at five o'clock and we're going to do virtual. I actually, next Monday and next next Wednesday, Gina, we have um, uh, Health First. That will be our guest. We have Anderson from Health First, and they're going to be with me on Monday to talk about how to get access to insurance because a lot of people have lost their jobs. Right. And a lot of people need the affordable care uh, uh, insurance uh, that is available to them. So Gina, on Wednesday, they're going to be our guests and we yeah. want you to stay you know, tuned for those shows. And again, we want to thank Henry Ramos, Henry from Deadline AV. Thanks so much for your support during this time. You are part of the Corona kindness. So thank you so much. Yeah, and everybody stay healthy. And b before we end, you know, remember, if you have any questions, call us. Look at our website, call us. You know, schedule your appointment with Dr. Middleton if you have any questions or if you have any concerns. And just if you feel sick, just don't run into your doctor. You can be infecting a lot of people. So just think before you do. Stay home, be safe. And GC, I love you. I love you Take more. Care. Bye.